Hello guys, this has been such a long requested video, so I'm so sorry that it's taken me this long to get to it. Uh, the working title that I have right now on my Google Doc is How to Get Things Done in Function LMAO Finals Week with Me. Um, so we'll see what the title ends up being, but this video is going to be all about all my study and productivity tips as I take you through a finals week with me. Study strategies and academic life in general are just very personal things. I have friends who study completely differently from me, and I love observing their routines as well. I feel like there's always something I can learn from them and how they study. I'm by no means saying with this video that these are like the ultimate set of tactics to succeed or anything. I just wanted to throw this disclaimer in there because um, this is just what I do. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's the routine that I study by. Um, I've kind of just found what works for me through trial and error, honestly. And my routine also changes a lot depending on what classes I'm taking. I kind of study very differently quarter by quarter, just depending on my schedule, my obligations, uh, work, etc. I thought this would be the perfect time to do this video as I kind of take you through finals week with me. This is, I think, my fifth or sixth finals week at UCLA. And finals week is always quite the occasion. I think the biggest thing I can really say is that I don't particularly change up the way that I study or do anything special for finals compared to what I do for the rest of the quarter. So I don't really study differently for the final exam than I do for either of the midterms. It's more so about kind of finishing strong and continuing the habits I've been practicing all quarter. Before we start, I want to take a quick second to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Skillshare. I'm sure you already know if you've been on my channel for a long time, but Skillshare is an online learning community where you can choose through thousands of online classes to learn almost any creative or technical skill under the sun. I love it so much. But my class recommendation this month is also very applicable to this video. It's called Maximizing Productivity When Studying, How to Take Notes Effectively by Lucy Morgan. One of the main inspirations I took from this class was actually integrating charting into my note-taking sessions, and I'll talk about that later in this study video. But this class was awesome, and it really goes over the kind of scientific proof for certain note-taking methods, and I loved it so much. I also teach two different classes on Skillshare, and I'm so thankful for all the support you guys have given those two this year. Those were so fun to create and a little bit more technical than what I like to go into on my YouTube channels. Right now, you can try out Skillshare for free using my link down below. The link below will give you premium access to Skillshare so you can watch any class on Skillshare Premium, including mine. Plus, after the free trial, Skillshare is super affordable, less than $10 a month. That's basically two Starbucks. Skillshare has been a year-long supporter of this channel and I'm super thankful to them. So thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. One more disclaimer, um, these tips will be pretty heavily aimed towards college level STEM classes just because that's kind of um, what I have experience with but I hope some of these tips will also be helpful regardless of majors. I love my humanities classes too. I still take them obviously and I think I honestly learn more about my study habits in those classes so hopefully these tips will be fairly um, broad and well-rounded but we'll see. Yeah. I also wanted to use this video to announce that I am holding my last giveaway, the biggest giveaway of the entire year. This is going to be my holiday 2020 giveaway, and it's going to include a ton of my favorite brands. So please stay to the end of the video for details on that giveaway. I wanted to start off this video and dedicate the first entire section to staying organized. I am just somebody who loves making checklists. I thrive off of checking things off of a list. And I personally notice myself being a lot better about my obligations and staying a lot more motivated when I put things down on a paper. So a planner for me is a must. The planner that I'm currently using right now and that I'll be using until about March when it runs out is from Plum Planner. This was actually a subscriber recommendation. Basically, it's a customized planning service. By the way, this is not sponsored. Um, I definitely bought this with my own money. It's awesome, but it's very expensive. And for that reason, I'm probably not gonna be repurchasing it for my next planner and I'll be trying out a different custom planning company. Basically, it gives you the opportunity to customize depending on what classes you're taking. So I just have it as class one, two, three, and four. And then you can add on whatever sections you want to. So I personally added on an academic planning section, which has been very, very helpful so far. I'm showing you guys the blank pages, but I have filled out many of the other pages. But my planner is my lifeline. I carry it everywhere. It's always on me. I also like to make physical checklists sometimes day to day, sometimes week to week, as well as a physical bullet calendar and then my weekly whiteboard calendar. A weekly whiteboard calendar is a little bit more in depth and just kind of has what the major events for day to day are gonna be, whereas my physical bullet calendar, um, I haven't made one for December yet, so you see me here making my November calendar, but it's just a little bit more helpful for seeing like my month long obligations and what I have to look forward to. Thank you. 
notes. This is probably gonna be the chunkiest part of the video because I have a lot to say here. Probably my main method of studying and learning for classes is by taking notes for the first time. There's a big debate over whether handwritten or typed notes is best. For me, the answer is both. And the number one thing that I prioritize when I'm writing my notes is maximizing my time. So for textbook heavy classes where the majority of the study material is from textbooks, such as biology, I just have to type my notes. The small trade-off of kind of memorizing things better when I handwrite them doesn't really offset the amount of time that it takes for me to handwrite the notes. So when I type notes, it's kind of sacrificing that little bit of an advantage you get from memorizing things better when you physically write them for saving time and you can dedicate that time that you save to restudying things. For lecture heavy classes where I can kind of take notes in real time and it's feasible, I will try and handwrite my notes. I do find that this is best for like humanities type courses or anything where the lectures are pretty well paced and the slides aren't too wordy. I try and write down like everything that my professor says that sounds important to a T because you never really know what's going to be on the exam. And then for conceptual classes where the majority of the material is presented by problem solving like math or organic chemistry, I tend to handwrite my notes and I don't really write words so much as just problems done in class with very detailed solving mechanisms. I try and make sure that I write down any problem that I've solved and I know is right so that I can figure out how to solve later problems that are similar just by kind of looking at what I did in class and seeing, oh yeah, this answer is right, so I know that the kind of work that I did was right. As for my tips of making the most out of your notes, number one, I think the most important thing is really taking the one and done approach. I make sure that the first time that I take notes off a textbook or lecture slides, I make them as detailed as possible so that I don't have to later go back through the textbook or PowerPoints and fill in knowledge gaps. I hate rereading chapters and I find that if you take your notes as detailed as possible the first time and you kind of maximize the knowledge that you absorb in your first pass, you will not regret it later. Number two is really just paying active attention when taking notes. And I think it's really easy to kind of doze off and not pay a lot of attention and just kind of type, especially when I'm doing type notes. So if that means taking breaks to keep myself attentive, so be it. For bio one, two, and three, I've had to take about six hours of notes per week, and that's a lot of work. So here I'm showing you all my notes for the entire quarter, and that's just one quarter of bio. With that amount of notes, it would be kind of ridiculous for me to expect myself to not take any breaks or to be actively paying attention for that whole chunk of time. I have TikTok on my phone. That is very distracting. So I make sure to take breaks, and we'll get to that in a second when I talk about Pomodoro. My third tip is just to kind of um, I guess be smart while taking notes and don't just write down everything. Write notes that are functional and make sense to you and you alone because they're yours. You don't have to worry about making them pretty. If you do find that taking pretty notes helps you learn, I have a friend who takes beautiful bullet journal notes because they help her feel more engaged while she's taking them and I love that. But for me, that doesn't work out. So don't feel pressured to make them pretty if you don't find that that helps you. Your notes can really be your biggest asset that's particularly tailored to you because you're the one taking them. Next, I'm gonna talk about studying. And I think this was probably the biggest learning curve for me when I started college. You really have to find a study method that works for you. And for me, the Pomodoro method has truly changed my life. If you've never heard of this before, basically it's just working on a time split, spending a certain stretch of time actively engaged and super concentrated on what you're doing and then taking breaks in between. Find a time split that really works well for you. For me, it's 25-5. So 25 minutes working hard, full attentiveness, um, like full throttle studying, and then a five minute break. I used to do 50 minutes and then 10 minutes off, but I found that 10 minutes was a little bit too long of a break to pick up after and I couldn't be as concentrated as I wanted to after that 10 minute break. So 25-5 works perfectly for me. How I study in particular differs a lot between different classes. But I think in college, the biggest challenge and adjustment is really learning how to study. Um, personally for me, coming from high school, I thought I knew how to study, but I didn't really. And I realized after high school, I didn't know how to study in a way that made sense for college classes despite taking college classes in high school. In my opinion, a lot of university courses are a lot less busy work than what you get in a high school class, but the work that you do get is harder. So I think it's an environment that's a little bit more conducive to procrastination, which can be a really big obstacle because the work is just much more mentally taxing, so you just don't want to do it. <laughs> I had to kind of completely reteach myself how to study and cramming really really does not work well in college. The biggest adjustment for me was just really doing a little bit of every single class every week so that by the time that exams rolled around, whether it was a midterm or a final, I didn't have that 
gut feeling of like, oh crap. And also to stop feeling guilty for days that you don't study. Class specific tactics for studying. I've had a lot of requests, particularly for OCHEM to make a full video about how I study for that, but I don't have enough tips for that. So just gonna kind of roll together class specific tactics I've picked up along the way from taking things. For biology and chemistry, I love making charts and diagrams that serve as a visual aid. This is something that I integrated after taking that Skillshare class just this quarter. And it's been one of the main ways I've really um, found myself being more engaged with my studying. Charting out mechanisms, reactions, anything that has kind of like a procedural method to it, super helpful because I feel like a lot of exam questions are giving you a certain step of the mechanism and then asking you to predict what happens next. And these charts are super helpful for that. And then my biggest study tip for OCHEM is to do it every day. And that sounds awful and terrible and not fun, but seriously, it has been such a helpful thing. And after a certain while, it doesn't really become much of a bother it doesn't have to be like hours of studying every day. I just find that if I do a certain set of problems every day, it stays on my mind and stays fresh. And I'm not really forgetting any concepts from past weeks or letting any certain mechanisms or reagents slip out of my mind. And then I wanted to dedicate the last section of this video to habits. I know that I personally get caught up in thinking about the notes taking and the study sessions and those things as central to my learning, but it's really about cultivating a routine of healthy habits. And with that means taking a lot of breaks. I find that my style of staying productive and what productivity looks like for me is kind of switching up my activity often, but they're all things I need to be doing. So for example, if I find that my mind is just going numb and hurting after three hours, Hours of Pomodoro studying for a class, I'll either switch to another class. So I'm kind of focusing my mind on different material, still kind of doing something I need to be doing, but it's not the same stuff I've been doing for a bunch of hours or switching to another thing altogether. So for example, writing a research paper or doing journaling or even going downstairs and doing some meal prep because that's something I need to be doing. It's on my to-do list, but it's not as mentally taxing. Sleeping every night is also non-negotiable. I've never pulled an all-nighter before in college. I did once in high school and I really found that it didn't do anything for me. Um, yes, I was still awake. So technically that was time that I had to study, but I didn't learn a single thing that night. All-nighters, in my opinion, give you extra time in the day, give you those extra hours in the day that you need, but they're not productive hours and you're not gonna learn anything. It's better to just get some sleep and come back refreshed than waste a bunch of hours not really learning at your best capacity. Eight hours is a little bit unattainable for most college students, so I try and shoot for six every night. If I can get eight hours, awesome, but don't guilt yourself over how little sleep you're getting as long as you're getting sleep. Speaking of guilt, taking breaks and not guilting myself for it. And this was a huge step. I feel like I'm very toxic with my image of what productivity can be sometimes, but the more time you waste kind of feeling guilty about taking a break that you probably really needed is just that it's wasted time. Make time for the things that matter. And if you need to, schedule schedule in time for yourself into your schedule. So for example, I love working out. I feel kind of cloudy headed if I don't get a good sweat in every now and then. So I try and make time for it. On days I know I'm gonna be busy, I make sure to put into my schedule about an hour and a half every day for some gym time. I did this while I was living on campus too and it was super helpful because I would have my little break to look forward to in the night. I've started going to therapy as well, which used to feel like a time drain. I was worried about how I would kind of work that into my schedule when I already had a bunch of other things going on. It has been an integral part in keeping me sane and keeping me motivated and keeping me honestly alive. So make time for the things that matter to you is what I'm saying. And then the final habit is just taking care of yourself even when you feel like you've got a lot on your plate. Hydration, eating well and eating often and preparing for your days. All right, and that is it for this video. I am so sorry that it's taking me so long to get this together, but I wrote out a whole script for this one. I took notes on what I wanted to say. <laughs> good luck to everybody taking finals right now. Um, good luck to future Julia taking finals right now. But for those of you who stuck to the end of the video for the giveaway, here it is, you waited long enough. This is my holiday 2020 giveaway and I'm super excited about this one. It's also gonna be my last giveaway. In it, we have a lot of things from some of my favorite brands, particularly indie brands. I wanted to shout out some of my favorites. We've got some Nobla in there. We've got a lot of ColourPop. We've got a little bit of Ana Luisa jewelry, a little bit of everything. The link to enter the giveaway will be down below. I did wanna clarify something. This was a question that came up with my last giveaway. On some giveaways, especially when I'm doing a video with Skillshare, I also have an opportunity 
community in the giveaway entry area to get five extra entries if you support my link with Skillshare for the month. This is by no means a required entry, it's just an opportunity to get five extra entries, but you can get a free entry if you are subscribed to the channel. So there's an option for that. Don't fill out the Skillshare one if you don't want to. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you again to Skillshare and thank you so much to you guys. Good luck on finals and Godspeed. I'll see you again soon. <laughs> you made it to the very end of this video. You get the bonus meme. Stay smart. Bye.